Welcome back to another episode of the Educated and the Reckless Podcast with your host, Apollo P.N. No better, Nina. And if I sound like I have a lisp, I have a Visalign in. Sometimes you have a lisp without it. So I wonder if this is going to take away the lisp. <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> that was bad. Yeah. I'm, just think, I'm thinking, hey, if I, have, if I don't have a lisp with these in, who knows? After I correct my smile and everything, I might not have a lisp ever. What if the, Why what is if, it coming out so much right now? Maybe I'm focusing on it. Yeah, I think you are. Don't think about it. And let me not think about it. Let me just get back to my regular conversation. So how's your week been, Nina? Good. Um, I went I went back to Cure for the first time in months. Oh, is that the drug dealer at, uh, place? Oh, it's the place where we, um, we think we had a racist encounter. Oh, shit. But we went back for one of my friend's birthdays, and um, it was fun. Mm-hmm. I had a really good time. The people in the booth the next test started fighting, which was fucking hilarious. Yep. It was on my Instagram and my Snapchat, if you guys have me. And um, then the girl goes up to my friend Brittany, and she's like, I know you and your friend recorded this. You have to delete it. I'm like, maybe if you learn how to act right in public, I wouldn't be recording you. Oh, that's what she said? That's what I said, because I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like chill like no one's deleting the video off their phone i don't give a fuck like act right and i won't record you like yeah um so you should say it was on live yeah <laughs> yo, that would that would have been funny it was on live can't take it down now um but yeah it was a good night and then when we were leaving it was so funny in the coat check line uh there was this white guy he tried to cut the whole line right uh-huh. and there's this black girl behind me and she goes hey it's black history month get behind me and he puts his head down and goes Ah, <laughs> I was the, fucking crying. She looks at me and winks after. <laughs> the Black History Month line gets you every time. I was crying, but yeah, that's pretty much all I did. That's all you did? Yeah, you didn't really so. do nothing else? Uh, the next morning, for some reason, I was throwing up, but not like no alcohol. Like I was throwing up stomach bile. So I don't know what was going on the next morning. Mm. And me and my mom were trying to figure it out. Because normally if I throw up the next day, I'm throwing up the alcohol. Yeah. But no, this time it was just stomach bile. It was really weird. Mm, maybe it was like semen. I, I didn't even have sex or give anyone a blowjob. But it could have been something inside the drink that someone gave to you. So you think somebody came inside of I didn't even drink in the club. You didn't? Did anyone pe- give you a drink? Like, hey, Nina, go drink. Offered and I declined because I didn't want to get that fucked up. Mm. I know my limit. Mm. So I know when I'm not trying know to drink. Know your limit. Play within it. I didn't drink at all in the club. You didn't drink? But no, I drank before the club, but not oh. in the club. You wanna I realized something, right? What? As I was coming here, no, as of like Sunday night, I realized something that I don't take time to process what I do throughout the day. No, you don't. So oftentimes when someone asks me what I'm doing, I always I always say nothing. Or I obviously say like, you know, I did this or I can't remember. Because I don't take time to really sit down and reflect on what I'm doing. Okay. But a lot of shit happens to me in like a day or in a week okay. that I kind of just breeze over because it maybe it doesn't hold that much importance to me. Maybe if it was someone else, they might be like ranting or raving about it. Yeah. But to me, I really don't. The only thing that holds importance to me was that on Sunday night, coming back from hanging out with the boys, watching the Super Bowl at Wild Wings. You watch the Super Bowl? Did I, did I watch the Super Bowl? Yeah, I'm asking you. Did you? Yeah, I did watch the Super Bowl. We went to Wild Wings. My friend was in town. He was like, yo, let's go to Wild Wings, watch the Super Bowl, you know, chill out. Do you understand football? Do I understand football? Yeah. <laughs> I just know once they get past that line of scrimmage, <laughs> they, they can move forward. That's it. Okay. The fuck I want to watch about. I yeah. mean, I don't understand it at all, so. Yeah. Uh, so after that night, and it was a cool night. I was driving back home, listening to Tupac, If I Die Tonight, and Death Around the Corner. And I, as I was driving past this intersection, a guy ran a red light, and I almost smashed into him. <gasps> Right, and so that happened so fast, and it was like shh, I break hella crazy, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And then I look to the left, I seen him over there. He stopped. I think he about to hop out his car, and it was like not even like ten seconds. It was like bomb. I processed. It was like, oh, I'm alive. Bomb, bomb, bomb. And I kept on driving. I didn't even stop to see what type of idiot it was. I was like, fuck it, I gotta get back home. Mm-hmm. You know, my model is I gotta get back home regardless. Mm-hmm. And so I'm plus I the next day I had to wake up early to get these invisible lines. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I hopefully Damn, you almost didn't make it to the Invisaligns. I almost I almost caught a body. <laughs> I almost caught a body like a vehicular homicide. Like, like it wouldn't have been your fault. It would have been his. But I would have still caught a body. Nina. But you, you would have been. No, you would have T-boned him. You were going straight and he was going. Uh, yeah. What's yeah. Going horizontal. I would have caught a body, Nina. Like, damn. Would you think you'd be able to live with yourself? Like. When you think, like, okay, my prime example, like, the humble Broncos driver. Yeah. Like, I just feel bad for him. Like, 
not even because he's Indian. Like, mm. I just feel bad for him because it's like, yo, you killed 16 people, like, not purposely. Mm. Like, it just happened because of the car accident. Mm. Like, I don't know, man. Like, would you even be able to live with yourself at that point? Like, like I would have to start rapping about murder. <laughs> no, no, no. But you, it's not, like, you didn't do it on purpose. It was, like, involuntary. I, involuntary manslaughter? Yeah. I, what, yo, that'd be a crazy charge to beat. That's, I couldn't even I know beat, somebody who had that charge. I couldn't beat that charge. I couldn't beat no, the charge. Could. I couldn't, no, you couldn't. I couldn't beat the charge. You're right, because that, that charge is specifically made for accidents like yeah, that. Yeah, like a vehicular homicide. That's what it was. I, I, either that. So what are you going to rap and talk about? Yeah, I committed a vehicular homicide. That sounds real gangster. <laughs> a vehicular homicide. Vehicular homicide. Yo, to be honest, like after that happened, I was like, yo, I could have caught I could have caught a body. And my insurance could have went up crazy. Why are your eyes lighting up as you say I could have caught a body? I could have caught a body. And my insurance could have been raised crazy. And I'm like, yo, what type of dickhead tries to run a red light? Like on some real shit. Like we, it was in Brampton. This happened in Brampton. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody like this is not Detroit nightline where you gotta run all red lights because you like someone might pull up on you and jack you out your car it's brampton it was here ontario and sandalwood intersection ain't nothing there that's gonna pull you out the car and do some shit to that so why would you do that shit like he almost you almost risked your life and you almost fucked up my shit right so when that happened i'm driving i'm like damn like, listen to tupac if i died tonight and death around the corner that shit would have fucked me up I just no. Nah, that was you did that after? No, I was playing it before it happened. Oh. Tupac, if I die tonight, and death around the corner, you spoke and it I, into existence. Yeah, that's and Sam they were playing them type of shits, and I'm thinking about death, and then like I'm could I could have caught a body, like I really could have killed someone, you know, death around the corner, like that's crazy, right? And so that happened. I was driving back home. I didn't take the time to process it, and I started thinking more about it as I was driving closer home. And I was like, "Man, I couldn't be in part of this type of inconvenience mm -hmm. because of the, I couldn't, I can't do some shit like that. I can't worry about someone else's life because they wanted to be an up dumbass." And I That's was what like, I'm saying. It could have been like just like a stupid teenager trying to see like what would happen, or it could have been someone who was like drunk or like really high. Maybe, like, maybe they're drunk. Maybe they're high. Maybe they're maybe they're just stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Yo, one time. Stupid. <laughs> one time in high school, we went to smoke at one of my friends' house, and she was driving, right? Yeah. And she gets in the car. <laughs> After we smoke, she gets in the car. <laughs> like, we're all coming out of the house, and she sits in the passenger seat. I'm sitting in the back seat, and she's like, why are we moving? I'm like, you're fucking driving. It's your car. Yeah. She's like, why am I in the passenger seat? <laughs> At that moment, I was like, "Bitch, should you even be driving at this point?" Like, nah. Man. See, the thing is, I think, I think people, I think people take driving a car for granted. Like, you could really like kill people. You could really do some yeah, fucked up it could, shit. It could be considered a murder weapon. Yeah, and the fact that a lot of people are getting behind the wheel and, and disregarding their own life just because they're trying to get to a point A to B on some just whole ass shit. Come on, man. Are you serious? Like, being in a car, I take that serious now, right? I always talk it serious. But, like, for real, for me, almost getting into an accident, I don't get no accident. For me to almost get into an accident because someone else is dumbass, yo, suck my dick, yeah, whoever that was. What's, that's what's scary. Is like, yeah, you like, yo, suck my dick. Driving. Like, that was crazy. Like, why would you do something like that? No, it's true. My mom hates when I'm driving at night, especially on a Friday and yeah. Saturday, because she's like, it's not even you, it's, like, everybody else. Yeah, exactly. It's so, true. that's my thing. It's, like, people who are driving out there being a little more cautious, like, with your... I mean, if you're driving out there, just to know that there's dumbass out there and you got to be on alert. You got to be ten. Mm -hmm. You got to be alert all the time. The people out there just really to do something stupid, especially after the week. We, I saw a bunch of fatal car accidents happen in, in the GTA and shit like that. Yeah. I'm like, yo, for real, you, you can't not see. You can't not know about people dying on a regular because of cars. Yeah. My, I got a friend recently. He got into a car accident. And he was right, really kind of regretful for it because he had, he said he didn't have a seatbelt on. The person he had in the car didn't have their, their seatbelt on. And they crashed into the guardrail and he hit, fucked up his whole car. And he was like, man, I could have really took someone else's life. Mm -hmm. You know, I came out of this. My, he's limping and shit like that. He got it. He had to go to the hospital and all that. I, and he's like, those type of incidents right there is like, yo, you got to be a little bit more cautious when you're behind the wheel. Like yeah. You got to understand, like if you value your life. You gotta, you gotta move a little different. But if you don't buy your life, go suck a dick and get off the road, bro. Like, <laughs> there's no need for that. Take I feel an like Uber. You and I are very different drivers. Like, I'm very like, I am kind of an aggressive. No, I, I will say I am an aggressive driver. My life is too precious for me. I've to be chased aggressive. someone down Major Mac once because they cut me off like at a ridiculous. And then once I pulled up at the light, 
would not look at me, would not roll down his window. Like, I chased him the fuck. My sister was like, yo, you got to chill. Like, just stop. I was like, fuck no. Like, I have bad road rage. I drove my dad's car for the first time since all that fuck shit happened with the gas pedal not working and the brakes not working. How'd that go? It was good, actually. I drove it, like, three times over the weekend, and I wasn't... Well, the first time I was shitting myself. After yeah. that, I was okay. I don't know. I'm too aggressive. I'm too precious. My li- I look at life too preciously to be too aggressive. What's, like, the fastest you go on the highway? Uh, 120. Really? 120, maybe. I touch 140. But anything after 140, you get your car impounded. So, Do you? Yeah. Well, So, it's the thing is, wherever I got to go, I don't got to be there that fast. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could be late to some shit. I'm sometimes late to some shit. But I'm not disregarding my life to get to a point. Because if I can't get to the point, what's the point of do you, doing yeah, that shit? Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm I mean? Always like, like a one. My thing is, if you're not pushing more than 120, get the fuck out of the fast lane. Hey, man. To be honest, you might say that now and then get pulled over for, for pushing I've never been pulled over, knock on wood, for all yeah. seven years of driving. Yeah, hey, man. I'm not or trying. Or in an axe. Well, once I hit someone from the back, but he got scared of me, so he drove away, and then I got lucky. Yeah, you just incriminated yourself. No, I didn't. Because it would have been my fault. Oh, He's the one who drove away because I scared him because yeah, I said, look where the run. fuck you stopped. Who the fuck stops in the middle of an intersection? Then he got in his car, and I thought he was getting all his insurance shit, and he drove off. I was like, oh, okay. Like, all right, fuck it. Cool. <laughs> uh, but I got these invisible lines and, and shit. Oh, let me tell you about the procedure I went through. Okay. My whole Monday was kind of like skewed. Yes. Dude put, I got like this propel system in my invisible line where they kind of like go to Twist the. Twist it? The, yeah. And they go to the root of my thing. Yep. Yeah, how you know about this? Because you're talking to someone who had braces at one point in their life. I, but you know, not talk. Well, you had propel before? Oh, well, propel's kind of new. You have to twist. It. Well, when you have braces and you have the little things, the blocks on your teeth, they got to twist those too to make them tighter and shift your whole mouth around. No, okay. You're talking about braces. I'm talking about propel. I'm talking about propel is like a mm-hmm. dental, a dental procedure where they kind of hit the root of the the hit the root of the tooth mm-hmm. and inflame it. So it's able oh. to, so it's able to shift the teeth around a lot faster. It cuts your treatment time in half. Oh, we never did that. Yeah, so that's what I did. And then dude that was doing it to me, dude put like the topical gel to kind of numb the shit. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't even wait like five minutes or nothing. Like that. He put that shit on, bomb, brought out the needle, put the, the numbing. Did you sh- feel it? Yeah, I felt the needle in. I was like, what the fuck? And then he waited another ten minutes after he did it, and he put another freezing gel in it. And then he kind of hit me with the little pro- propel thing, mm-hmm. and he was twisting. I was like, yo, why is it so goddamn much pressure on my gums, bro? Like he's. Ow. And then he gave me, he hit me with IPR. Um, and then he kind of shaved down like like two teeth or something to kind of get some space. The braces days, man. Yeah, man. So let's see. I'm supposed to be done by like the end of July. Okay. By August. It's quick. So I switch. Yeah, because I switch. Because I got the procedure. I paid more money for it. I I dropped a fucking load on my teeth, man. How much? As of yesterday, or as of all together, probably like three three four hundred. Damn. Yeah. Would you ever get like a diamond? Like once your teeth are all fixed and shit. Would you ever get grills? Yeah, I would. Like I, blinged I would. out grills or like just regular grills? I'll get regular gold grills. I'll probably get fangs, to be honest with you. Yeah? Yeah, like gold fangs. I'll probably do that. Mm. I feel like it would work for me. Interesting. Yeah, I'll get the gold fangs. Okay. All right, so that's enough about my thing. Man, these these hurt, though. I know. I, I was thinking about making a YouTube video about my Invisalign journey. You know, I was thinking, because, you know, I didn't really know that people make like youtube videos about their journeys right and like i was on accutane starting almost a year ago actually i was on accutane my acne people who know me and saw me in real life you would literally not believe seeing my before pictures without any makeup on you would not believe that i had acne that bad like i'll show you Mm. afterwards she was fucked up you will be disgusted it looks like an acne horror commercial like i actually had it so fucking bad i used to cry about it all the time like Mm -hmm. because it's so embarrassing it's like you go out in public and it's like you can't go out in public without makeup. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, like, you just don't want people looking at you. And, like, you're insecure, like, being around people without anything on. I always find like, it weird. Like, people who have, like, severe acne and put on makeup. Like, we see that shit. You know that, right? I know. But, no, trust me. When I show you my pictures, you're going to be, like, I had no idea you had it that bad. Mm. Like, I don't feel, like, a lot of people I showed them to, like, a lot of friends and stuff. And even my sister's friends, they are like, she actually had it like that. And they oh. saw me during yeah. those times. I was, like, yeah. yeah. She was crazy. But 
it's so funny because being on YouTube now, like I see a bunch of people do like Accutane journeys. When I get enough confidence and I get the balls to drop my Accutane, my before pictures, then I'll do it. It's the before pictures that like make me so like nervous. No, nah, but the after picture is amazing. The after pictures is what really bring lights to the before. It's like whoa, like the worse the worse you are before, and yeah. the better you are after is what brings like the most amount of light. It's like whoa, that shit really worked. Yeah, yo, I'll show you after. You're it actually gonna be shook. The before was disgusting. Yeah. I would not talk to me if I was anybody in this world. Oh, that's nasty. Like it was nasty. I never had a pro acne problem growing up. See, my mom had it really bad when she was growing up, and mm. me and my youngest sister got that from her. Mm. But I had it the worst out of all three of my sisters, out of the two of my sisters. I definitely had it the worst. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, I never really had. Sucked. I never had that type of shit. And it sucked because I didn't get it until I turned twenty. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it in high school. I didn't. Ha it was when I the year after I came back from Baltimore. But it's weird. Every time I'm in the states, mm -hmm. it's like they put sh you know how they put shit like in their water, like minerals and stuff. When I'm we like, we put that in, over here. We put fluoride in our water. I know, but theirs is different. When I when I wash my face in the states, mm -hmm. like even I remember once I was in New York for five days, my skin cleared up so fast, like so good. As soon as I came home, broke out again. Mm. Like I noticed that a lot, which is weird. And as soon as I came home from Baltimore, was when it all. So came. you tell me, people in the states that have like from fucked up skin really just don't wash their face at all? At all? Probably. Oh, probably. Oh, that no. might be the new the new thing. I don't know. All right, so let's get into some topics, all right? Okay. We are 15 minutes in. We do this a lot. All right. Why are you talking like that? So we talked about Juicy Smollett. Oh, my God. We talked about it. We talked about him last week. And no, we... no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to need you to rewind and say it again. Juicy Smollett. <laughs> You said we talked about juicy smoke. <laughs> That's his name. It just, just, juicy. It's Jussie. Jussie, not like Jussie. Juicy smoke. Like I said, juicy. Like, why do you have to make it sound so like it's just Jussie Smollett? That's it. Just yo, his name, his sister's name is Junie Smollett, right? Okay, that's great. Yo, but his, it's not juicy. Yo, his his sister looks like Jordan Sparks. You realize that? But she, I didn't look at her. Yeah, her his sister looks like Jordan Sparks, it and is. she's pretty, and she got AIDS in that movie. She has, Temptation. Oh, yeah. She was in the movie. Yeah, you ever watched that Tyler Perry movie, Temptation, no. where homeboy when girl left? Oh, with Beyonce. No, that's no, uh, that's something else. Uh, you ever watched that Carmen movie with Beyonce? Carmen. Yeah. See, this, this, this is for all the OG people out there. If you know what Carmen is, I don't. It's a musical song. It's a musical movie. I'm not even gonna front. You don't know Carmen? You like you Beyonce? Like girls? you? No. Do you like? No, Car I don't like Beyonce. You know? I don't follow Beyonce like that. Like I like her, but I'm not like beehive. Like super I'm not. Obsessed. I'm not beehive either. But like, if you know about Beyonce, you know about Carmen. Okay. Well, I don't know about Carmen. You know about Carmen? I might post this on this. Ask to see if people know. I might ask if you know about Carmen. Then you know about Carmen. Okay. If you know about Carmen. If you don't know about Carmen, then. But Carmen the movie with Beyonce in it. If you know about Carmen. When you say Carmen, I think of Spy Kids. Nah. What? Because the girl's name was Carmen. Was it really? Like, yes. Well, how'd they grow up? Did she grow up fine? Yeah, she has a baby. She grew up nice? She's married and has a baby. Oh, all right. That's, yeah. good. That's good. You you have to keep in mind, you and I are a good five years apart. Five? You're no, going to be 27 this year? Yeah, yeah. So. I'll be 24. Four, oh, no, three. So, so you graduated, right? Five, two, six, six, yeah. My brother is five years apart from me, and he knows a lot of shit. Maybe because he's just around me. That's why. Maybe that okay. might be the thing. Okay. Anyways, back to Jesse Smollett. All right. So he spoke out about his attack. Yes. Didn't really address it too too detailed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also he said that he's a gay Tupac. Yeah. But a lot of holes and a lot of people after people listen to it they were like whoa this is disgusting what type of country we live in maga has white people yeah being i up. felt like that exactly right and then people took took a seat back really look listen to the information it was like this don't sound believable bro mm -hmm. it sounds kind of wild it's kind of sounding like wh how how you so you got beat up in like negative antarctica weather mm-hmm you still walked into your hotel with the noose around your neck and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you still got the sandwich and the noose around your neck. You know, and uh, there's other like conspiracy theories saying that he was cruising for sex. Oh, he was you trying to look for a, a cheap thrill? I and heard she went that, he, that there was he actually got into a little love quarrel with Lee Daniels. Is what I. That's another rumor that I heard. I don't think. I don't know if that's true or not. No. But that's another. That was another. Oh, Lee Daniels theory. also posted and deleted something. Would you, if you think about it, Lee, he posted something and he deleted it right after. 
Yeah, like a lot of a few people have said that it could have been. Sorry, yeah. I'm trying to get comfortable. A yeah. few people have said that it uh, he could have like there was a theory that he could have gotten to like a little love quarrel with Lee Daniels, and obviously Lee Daniels has not come out as gay. So Lee Daniels is gay. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> you, I don't know where you've been, but Lee Daniels <laughs> is gay. I was just gonna say, where the fuck have I been? Yeah, you've been I a- did not know he was gay. Okay, he's so been gay the whole time. That's a plausible theory. Um, but you know what I thought was weird, like, because the thing is, like, uh, everybody knows I'm the kind of person who believes everybody, blah blah blah. Like, which is not, which is not a good thing, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, and then you come out to be a liar, and then he makes you look stupid. I imagine if you had a, a huge. No, nah, it never makes me look stupid because no. if it really did happen, then guess what? I still believed you. So. No, but what if you come out as a thing? It's like a huge platform. It's like I believe whatever, and then you go like, oh, this is disgusting. That that that, and you you kind of make a divide, and it's like he comes out as he's the liar, and you was just coming like, and you're like, damn. Fuck. Okay, well. I believe the liar. Anyways. You that's damaging, though, too. Yeah. But, okay, the thing is, it's, okay, I find it really weird that in where he's speaking out for the first time publicly, yeah. he was at a concert, right? And he's reading off of a paper. Like, I, I don't get... fought back. Why, why, why wouldn't you just speak from the heart? Like, why do you have to read off a paper for an experience like that? It's a PR thing. You think he's lying? Well, that's the thing. Because you know what? He said he wasn't hospitalized in, in that thing. He said he didn't go to the hospital. But, uh, then, but isn't that the new story that broke up? He was in the hospital? And how come Lee Daniels posted a screenshot of them on FaceTime? And his face had a scratch on it in the hospital. And then they also said there was no footage. I'm pretty sure it was Lee Daniels. Let me just double check. For Hold on. For like, a guy who said he got beat up, put noose around his neck, and bleach po- or, or, or liquid substance. Yeah, Lee Daniels is the one who FaceTimed him. And he has a screenshot of a, him in the hospital with a scratch on his face. But he's light-skinned, right? He, his face should look a lot redder. You know how light skinned people are? Like, you yeah. get the cut and then you get the redness around it? Yeah. You think that's makeup? Okay, I don't know about that. But I also uh, think. Nina, also, if you get a scratch on your face and you yeah. tell me you just get a line. I usually you, do, though. You I should don't get. get you don't on, always man. get the red redness around it. It's Why wouldn't you? It's blood rushing to the but cut. But he only has this one small cut. That's it. Well, yeah. Also, for a guy who said he got his ass beat, like, why you only got one cut? That's what, that's what I don't know. And also, the other sketchy thing is. I did some research, and Chicago is number three out of the top five cities in the world with the h- largest surveillance camera networks. They have 17,000 cameras within the city. Yeah. How come there's no footage? You lying? Doesn't really make sense. And also, they're talking about, like, the phone the phone records. Who did he call? Apparently, after you got he got beat up. He was on the phone with his manager. Exactly. Why would you call your manager, a manager after you get your ass beat? Why not call 911? I don't know, because maybe... Well, that's the thing. I don't know. There's something that's not right about it. Exactly. But I think, um, like, I was also thinking maybe it could have just been like an inside, um, like an inside job. Initially, we thought last week possibly because we were recording right when it came mm-hmm. out. Um, and then I was like, oh, like maybe the people it was an inside job with the people at the subway and they deleted the camera footage. But now, like, just these pieces not making sense, and apparently he's not cooperating with the police and blah blah blah. I don't know. Sounds like a liar. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds like it sounds fishy to me. Definitely, definitely sounds fishy, but I don't know. It's it's like, why would somebody make up a story like that? To gain clout. But like, hold on, hold on. Why why do you make it seem like this is fucking? astronomical you can't believe it there's white girls who lied about people raping them yes, all the time i know all the there's people who lie about the dumbest believe, shit but that's why i like i just don't get why people lie about that shit like why like what are you getting out of it there are a lot there's people out there who lie who find it hard to tell the truth who find it fucking hard to tell the truth it's it's they'll try to address the truth and then they'll dance around it and then they'll just end up just copping up to a lie and then just leaving people who can't tell the truth Okay. Just maybe but just, just maybe Jesse is just a fucking low class liar who just happened to rise up to stardom. I don't want to believe that though, because he just seems so nice. <laughs> no, but seriously, like my real question is if I could talk to him right now, I would ask him like why? Why if what? He did what, lie what? about it. Why? Man, well, what was this? You what don't was got records. You got, of you got records now, to sell. If anything, it just makes you look worse for lying about something like this. You got records to sell. Ayo. Bro, you know, I'm gonna just be honest, bro. Like he's inside the media. A lot of the information we want want from him, we're probably never gonna get. Terrence Howard still haven't spoke on. T- you no, Terrence, Terrence, Terrence J right. he has still it. hasn't spoke on the fucking incident where he crashed. It's a criminal incident. Yeah. Why haven't I seen no type of? It, I haven't seen this man on the books nowhere. 
I mean, why have they not arrested him? on the gram, but he just has never spoken about it. Yeah. Why hasn't he been arrested? What happened to the girl that ran away from the car with Who him? Who was she? Who was she? I have questions. The fact that the fact that we don't know information regarding Terrence J's that crashing a Lambo into a, a what do you drive a tree? tree. And, and a fire hydrant and, and a fleeing the scene. What the fuck? I don't know, man. It's really fucked up. I forgot about that. People and exactly that's what happened. That's what the thing. That's what the new celebrity thing to do. Just never address it, and then people forget about it. Yeah. And no, uh, and then people remember about it eventually, and it's like, damn. All right. So, Twenty One Savage uh, is not a U.S. citizen. Is this is surprising to you. Was this surprising to you? Yes. Obviously, I did not expect this to come out. Um, Which, I, in hindsight, Twenty One Savage never really fl- reflected on his like his youth, youth. He kind of just reflected on just growing up in Atlanta and just being around murder, mayhem, and chaos. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because, like, a video resur- resurfaced of his mom at some giveaway charity thing that he did for the community. Mm-hmm. And she has, like, a British accent. And, like, okay, my thing is... They're from, well, her mom's of the Dominican acts uh, of nationality. Yeah, but wasn't she born in England, too? Um, because I seen a birth certificate and it's, it makes you state the parents place of birth too. And I swear, I don't know if that's real. I saw I don't that know if the whole thing is real. I don't know if that's real. You just tell me, it's just coincidentally, his whole birth certificate just gets put up on the internet. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if the whole thing is real because didn't he have a gun possession thing in high school? Uh, he said that he did have guns in high school. I don't know if he got. I couldn't find anything on charges for that, but. Yeah. He was convicted for felony drug charges back in 2014 in the state of Georgia. Apparently, his lawyer said, no, that's not right, but it's still on file. It's still on file. Yeah. So he would have got deported then because that's a that's a felony charge. You would get deported right away for that. Yeah. So how come now all of a sudden like it's coming up? And also, I was trying to look. Has he ever gone on tour outside of the U.S.? No, he hasn't. He can't. Okay, so then that. So I, but that. I thought. The reason why I thought he never went on tour outside, I just thought he never had a big fan base outside the country. Me too. But, well, I just didn't know whether or not, but I figured if that was the case, like, yeah. it was just because he doesn't have that big of a fan base. Yeah. But now it makes sense. But I just think the whole thing is sketchy because it's like, yeah, if he had that felony drug charge, they would have deported him right away, which is weird. Yeah. Also, when I was, like, reading up on it and stuff, it said that he actually has a means to stay um, because he was a victim of violence back when his best friend was killed or something um and his kids are u.s citizens so like he can actually stay Mm -hmm. but ice is not giving him like they're not doing it for him and he applied for a visa in 2017 yeah that's what they say and they had it on pause and they know that and they just decided to arrest him all but my thing is there's a lot of there's why 2017 after 2005 i don't know there's certain things that like there's certain things that Maybe because he was trying to go on tour around that. And he's like, okay, I can get it done quick because I'm a celebrity. But, like, you would think before the come up, you would want to apply for that. I'm just saying, there's certain things that just don't make sense. Or maybe there's certain things that are left out that just don't connect well. You tell me after 2005, 21 Savage and I are the same age. 2005 is about 13. Mm -hmm. 13, and then what? Expires in 2006? Or it was here in 2004, it expired in 2005. Uh, I think he was here in 2005. And it expires in 2006. So he's 14. He's in high school yeah. when his visa expires. Okay, but... Four years. Four years in high school. His mo- I don't know if his mom's a citizen. I It looks like it, it, they also exposed his father. His father's like a doctor. Oh, is he? Yeah. It's Dr. N- Amasu or something. Okay. Which is, which is now weird. It's like, I thought he said he didn't grow with his pops. Oh, I don't know. I never pay attention to that. Well, the thing is, I don't know what... Uh, uh, all right. Let me get my words straight. This whole 21 Savage thing is it's unfortunate to hear. Yes. But it's also... it's from a, For a person who's looking out, out looking in, it's kind of like, why didn't you file? Yeah. Well, in his defense, 2017, how old were you in 2017? That's two years ago. 23? Oh, no, 26. No, 24. Okay, so 20, yeah, no, 20, 24. Sorry, 20, 25. My bad. 25. Okay. So, I mean, like, he should have applied for it at some, maybe just after high school, because I feel like that's when you really start to become, like, super independent is just after high school. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I don't know, maybe he just 
thought like it wasn't that big of a deal. And then I feel like once he hit 2017, he's like, shit, like I need to get on tour outside of this country if I want to make more money. So yeah. let me apply for it now. I feel like that was his thought process. Because I feel like before that, he was just young, dumb, stupid, just running around doing the music thing, whatever. And then he started to blow up and he's like, fuck, I need to make more money and get out of here. But my thing is, he's paying American taxes. Is he? He has to. Okay. He has to. If he's paying American taxes, like, who would have thought he's not getting married? And then I remember you posted something that said that 21 never hid the fact that he was, uh, that he was from the, was, hold on. Never hid the fact that he was in the U.S. illegally. I mean, not, what do you mean? It hid the, you, if you don't blatantly address it, it's not, it's, it's not, hiding yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody had any sort of idea. Yeah, exactly. You tell me, if no one says, if, I, you know, if I'm here illegally, yeah. if I never bring it up, are you not going to sue an American or a Canadian? Yeah. No, Is that really, yeah. what do you mean? I never hid the fact. Yeah. If I don't talk about it. I just think also, like, even if he was to go back to the UK, like he has a, that global fan base. He wouldn't, it's not like he's going back I'll, somewhere where it's. I, I don't know if he's going back to the UK. They might send him to Dominica. Oh, shit. Because he was born in Dominica. Well, if they send, if they sent him back to the UK, let's say for theory, like hypothetically. Yeah. Um, if that is where they sent him back to, I don't think it would necessarily be that traumatic, minus the fact that the kids, like, whatever. Would he be allowed back into the U.S., though? That's what I'm not sure. Uh, usually when you get deported, you'll never, you're never able to come back. Oh, okay, then never mind. Yeah. But the reason I was saying that I don't think it would be that big of a change is because the U.K. is a country that is similar yet different to the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, but you can like, still have a strong career out there. Yeah, like, you know you what got, I mean? Like, you, you got the European stuff out there. You still have Spain. that global fan base. Yeah, you still have, like, you know, it's, it's pretty similar to here, like... Mm -hmm. It's pretty similar in terms of lifestyle and whatnot. So that's why I wouldn't, I would say that's not like a huge thing, but because if he couldn't come back and his kids are here, how many kids does he have? One or two? Three. Oh shit. My bad. But yeah, I don't know. Um, 21 bloke. Another thing I wanted to address, um, Demi Lovato. So people got mad at Demi Lovato for tweeting. The funniest thing about the Super Bowl is the 21 Savage memes. Wale went at her and was like, "To be it honest, wasn't funny about the heroin and blah blah blah." And a few other people went after her. Then the public went after her. I got a question. What? How come nobody went after that sports broadcaster Jamel Hill, who posted two tweets of her own that were memes of Soldier Boy, the whole Drake thing, and it said, "Uh, it said I have it right here." There was two of them. I screenshotted them. And I'm like, how come nobody's giving her the same heat? The first one said, so he didn't have 21 M's in his bank account. He had 21 pounds. And then it had the soldier boy thing. <laughs> first of all, that's a stupid fucking joke. Because 21 pounds is only $42. So that doesn't even make sense. Um, then the next one is 21 savages from the UK with the soldier boy thing again. Nobody came at her with that same energy. Chris Brown also posted, posted something and nobody came at him either. So I don't understand why you, everybody... You I mean, make you Everyone's can make fun of your own, but when someone outside your own makes fun of you, it's like, bitch, look, or you, you chill out, But it's like, relax. she wasn't even making fun of him. She was laughing at the memes like everybody else was. Yeah, keep that, keep that to yourself. Like, it just, I don't know. I, I think the way everybody went at her was super extra and unnecessary, because it's like, okay, everybody else was laughing about it, so, like, why is it such a big deal? Obviously, it's because she's white. That's why everyone's going at her. Yeah, but, she's a crackhead, too. Alleged, alleged <laughs> crackhead. Yeah, but now people are saying, oh, she's racist and blah, blah, blah. That's a reach. Like, yeah. come on, that's a reach. She's Italian, so like, if she, if this was if this was a what case, does that mean? No, this is what I'm, this is what I'm explaining. If this was a case of let's say her, like, because she's Italian, she's not uh, just American like Tommy Loren or whatever her name is, right? She could get Demi Lovato could get deported too. So she's laughing at something that could have potentially like, was happened. Was she not born too. in America? I don't know, but let's say hypothetically she wasn't, or her family members or something who are here illegally, they could get deported too. So you know, she's laughing at a call situation that could still happen to her as well. Italians would face a lot of discrimination earlier on in America. Yeah. Them or Irish uh, would face a lot of discrimination. Too. They would call Italians Wops. WOPs, you yeah. know what I mean, without papers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, so I say that to say this. It's like, hey, man, we all have our own struggles, but we don't kind of just, you know, shit on other people's struggles. Oh. I mean, I've heard people shit on still use the WAPS term nowadays. But it, I just are you serious? Yeah. Why? I just, because they think it's funny. I mean, I don't think it's funny, but they think it's funny. 
Um, I just think that everyone who's going at her and calling her racist and stuff, it's super unnecessary and that's not the case. She's literally laughing at the memes like the rest of the world. So what, am I racist because I laughed at them too? No. It's funny, bro. Like, mm-hmm. it's genuinely, we're not laughing at him and the situation. We're laughing at the fact that he's actually from the UK. Like, this is a, really a thing. Like, nobody, when you picture a UK man, like, you don't picture someone like, I don't savage. know, with tats on the, their face and shit. Like, you picture someone, you know, like, all proper and shit. Like, British people, instantly when you hear British, you think of, like, prim and proper just because of the accent. No, I think of tracksuit. <laughs> okay. Track suits. I think of like when I hear a British accent, you don't picture it coming from Twenty One Savage with a knife on his forehead. It's like, a no- it's a knife. <laughs> you know what I yeah, you know what I mean? Like you don't you don't see that. That's why it's funny, but it's like everyone just got so sensitive. Like, chill the fuck out, bro. You know what? I, this situation is so it's so like not it's criminal, but like it's so like outside criminal twenty one element. Yeah. It's like, bro, you got fucked up on immigration charges? It's not something anybody would have seen coming. Yeah, like, I, you would think, like, 21 would got into, like, some type of altercation with someone or something like that, yeah. which led to something crazy, but immigration? Yeah. And he just dropped the Forever 21 line, too, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Fuck. Crazy. Fuck, man. Like, this is, like... This is just the start of 2019. I wonder what else we're going to get. Oh, yeah. I'm saying, yo, 2019 has so far, first quarter, fucking crazy. We're not even through a quarter yet. We're not, no, we're not even first, first quarter. We're we're like, one out of 12. No, I'm not. Quarter, a quarter is three months out of the year. I know. We're not even at three month mark yet. Yeah, I know. This oh, is the we're fourth, in the first quarter. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So Sorry, I'm really tired. So we're still in January. Was, was a doozy. We got hit over the head with the R. Kelly. And then we got hit over the head. Oh, yeah. I forgot. We got hit over the head with Soldier Boy. Damn, January was really what else, that long. What else? We got hit over the head with like a whole bunch of other sexual allegations going on. We got hit over the head with some other shit. Yo, and now they, we're starting February 21. Yeah, 21 started off like Black History Month too, man. Fucking up the black. Oh, and we got battle we we're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Man, it's crazy, man. It's crazy in these streets. Uh, Are you want to talk about battle or, or you want to talk about this game? Let's talk know. about Bawa first. Okay. All right, man. Bawa. See, the thing is, I don't like. The, I don't like the fact that I saw scratches on Bawa Bawa's face. Mm-hmm. You know, people are saying like, "Yo, we're so glad you didn't hit the women," but other people are shitting on him. But like that's it. bad on her part. Yeah, but like, I still say like, "Yo, maybe as a as a deterrent, maybe he should have just popped her in and shit one time." Well, I just said like, it "Yo, before. chill out." I said it before on the podcast. It's like girls have no problem coming at other girls yeah. with this fighting energy and like getting into a scrap. Sometimes they're a little more afraid to do it, I think, but they will go at guys with that full on like crazy energy ready to go because in their head, they're like, he can't hit me back. And if he does, he's in the wrong anyway. So I could talk to him and disrespect him whatever way I want. Like you got to understand humans are humans. Expect the same fucking energy, whether yeah. it's the same sex or the other person don't instigate a problem for no reason. Mm. Just because you think you're at an advantage. Like, that's a sick way of thinking. People, humans and a have, lot of girls think like that. Humans have two reactions, fight or flight. Some it's people, really fucked up. Like, I would never come at a guy with the same energy I come at my sister with without expecting the same reaction that my sister has, which mm-hmm. is getting into a fist fight. Well, that was a little while ago, but, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't expect that. I, th- I think it's just crazy. Like, and even just seeing this, like his face all scratched up like that, that's disrespectful. And if yeah. I was that girl, I would be fucking embarrassed. Yeah. Like what the, like you really like, it was like some people always say is if you got to get to that point where you feel like you got to put physical harm on someone, you shouldn't even be with them. Like, you got to just yeah. leave. But like, I say that to say this, I'm not trying to like, like, I think Bow should just pop the one time in the chin, like slow her ass down. Like I'm proud of him for not doing anything, but he had every right to. Yeah, like I wouldn't be mad. I necessarily wouldn't be mad. But the, obviously, the rest of the sensitive world who got it done with yeah. the bottle is gonna be mad about this I think, too. Like, I think I look at it different, right? I look at when you if you call, if you're one of those guys that come back home and beat on your wife or beat on your girlfriend just because like you're having a shady day or maybe they just messed up on something. You gotta put that. You wanna put hands and feet on her. And that's fucked. You wanna you know give her the ground and pounds, Tyson blows and shit like that. Like that type of shit. That's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It's different from this. It's different from when a woman is coming at you, hitting and clawing and scratching, yeah, like, calling you a you, bitch and all that stuff. Bow like, might have been like, yo, you better just relax. And Bow might have been just trying to stop her from, you know, trying to restrain her and shit like that. But I think you should, like, sometimes, like, you just chill out. And it's, yeah. maybe, she, maybe that would have stunned her. 
like I've always wondered how when I see girls fighting with like against their boyfriends or something like I always wonder how the guy just hugs them and holds them while the girl is like kicking and punching. He's a battered. Like, he's a insane, battered. Bro. He's a battered mate. That's what I a, would never be able to do that. That's what you call a battered man. They ain't no, ain't no fucking throw hands at me and I'm gonna hug you. Nah, fuck all that love shit. Nah, that's, fuck all that's, that turn I've the other always wondered like, kudos to you guys for holding your shit, but like, he's a battered uh, man. That's crazy. Ain't no, ain't no. You, you the can have ver- someone you, touches me. Like, you have a ver- You can have a verbal uh, con- uh, conversation, you know, and things just be verbal. And then you kind of make it up after. But like you tell me, you're going to try to put hands and feet on me. And then you try to hit me with Tyson <laughs> blows. And you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And just relax. Like, we're not. I'm not going to hug you after. Ain't no, like, piece it up. Ain't, you're not yeah. a man. I just or not even a man. But like, it's not even like, it's not even like as a guy, some guys you just fight and then you fight out, you get out the energy and you just move about your day. Like, it, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I just think if I was this Kaomi Leslie chick, I would be extremely embarrassed. Like that's not a good look, sis. Uh, I hope that I hope that Bao throws a book at her. Oh, but then again, Bao is is uh, a fruit town Piru, so he doesn't believe in probably you know any type of legal repercussions against him or you know, against people. So he probably just gonna let drop the charges. Damn. She might not drop the charges though. But what she, charges is she gonna put on him? Probably. It was act- all over what talking to another guy. I See, that's the other thing. She was giving another guy like. I just don't get what is so hard to be like loyal and all about one person. Like, why is that so difficult for some people to understand? Like, why do you have to be out here flirting with other guys and giving other guys the attention that while your man is right there, bro? Like, even regardless of if he's there or not, like, why are you giving all that attention to somebody who doesn't give a fuck about you mm-hmm. versus somebody who actually does care about you and who's actually there? Like, I just don't get people. Man, this is the world that we live in. I just don't get it. What do you think? What do you think? What's going to think? What do you think is going to happen? Right? You think you, you think they could piece things up together? I think I think Bawa was a simp, to be honest. Mm. And I think he will forgive her. Mm. So is Bawa? And then I think b- she's going to take advantage and leave him. You think Bawa is a battered lover? Yeah, I think he's a simp for real. Fuck. Damn. You tell me he's going. He's going. Damn. You think he's going to put? Oh, damn. damn. I think he's going to. Take her back. Oh my god, sorry. Damn, you tired like I was tired last week, but I no, get I'm actually really tired. I think he's gonna take her back and then when she gets like whatever clout she needs from it, she's yeah. gonna dip. Alright, so let's talk about this game. You think game is whack for doing what he gotta do? Cause the game is game has been on his very salacious wave as of recently. He has a video snippet going out saying that he he had Kim, oh, he had my dick in Kim Tho's throat. I was holding about it. Or some shit, yeah. Yeah. You know, talking about all that nasty shit, get, making um, Kylie Jenner breakfast. Mm-hmm. He didn't fuck. No. He was babysitting he Kylie. Yeah. Uh, and then talking about he fucked. Allegedly. Yeah. Fuck, no. It's talking about he oh, fucked. Oh, so now I was like, okay. I see how you work. Talking, all, right. all right. Talking about, no, we, the Indian right. love shit. Mm-hmm. We might talk about yeah. that shit because we've seen that pictures of Indian love. Oh, yeah. That shit's out there. I don't but um, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, um, this everything like even the black china saying he's fucked black china and shit like that. And Chloe. You know what I mean? Like Um and white. also so what he said, what did he say about Sin again? How he fucked her, right? He said he fucked Sin. Before Joe. Or after Joe. Before Joe. Before Joe. Before Joe. Oh yeah, that would make sense because they're getting married. Wow. Um Joe Budden responded. He brought up the whole India love shit and how he had a sexual, the game had a sexual assault allegation against him and he had to, like, he didn't, he lost the case and, like, all this other shit. And Joe was saying something that stuck out to me. Joe was saying he thinks that the game sees Sin as a stat, as a stat now to say that he fucked her yeah. because she's, she's with him. Joe. Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that fully. I agree with it to an extent, but I do think like, I don't think it's necessarily all because of Joe. Like Sin kind of blew up um, a little bit like with the whole love and hip hop thing. She started to get more clout and then whatever, Joe came in the picture. I'm gonna be honest with you, started, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Would you really talk about Sin Santana off of just uh, love and hip hop? I don't know. People talk about K. Michelle off of just love and hip hop. Because K. Michelle was able to do something off of that. Like she had a, beautiful voice and she was able to get her own spin-off show 
Jocelyn she, Hernandez. Is that her name? She was a very uh, upbeat personality where she was very different. Jocelyn? Jocelyn. No, you, she was not. You don't think that you don't think that her personality was a lot different? I don't diver- think so. I mean, I think it was different. I don't think it was And I don't even think TV. people talk about her like that. It was talking about her more so because she was Stevie, Stevie J. J. And the, the whole antics that Stevie J was doing. Right now, I don't know if she's really in the conversation right now because before it used to be a yo Stevie uh, Jocelyn Hernandez is yeah, a man. But Sin, the reason I say shit. with Sin is because like she's been doing her thing in terms of like like she's been getting her name around via the internet. I found What's, out about Sin. Listen, I uh, found out about Sin through um on Instagram a couple of years ago when she posted that Christmas video of her singing in a Santa Claus hat or rapping with a Santa Claus hat, a broom, and a drink in one hand. That's how I found out because I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. I don't really pay attention to Joe Budden. And that's how I found out about her. Like, she has all those videos of her doing her little morning concerts to Beyonce and stuff like that. Like, I feel like she, to an extent, she did give herself a name. And then Joe Budden came along, obviously elevated that because a lot of people know Joe. And then they're like, who's your wife? And blah, blah, blah. It's when it's when you it's when you're around people that have star status Mm -hmm. is that when it starts to rub off on you. Well, Sin could be, there's a lot of girls on the internet who are probably known, but they're not necessarily star status because they haven't broke that, broke out that mold. Okay. Where as in, in Sin's lo- uh, situation, yes, yeah, she's independent. She don't really need Joe, let's say. But with Joe, coupled with Joe, now she is aligned with a man mm-hmm. who is of a very prominent media industry. One of the prime, one of the premier voices in hip hop culture. Now, her status goes up. Mm-hmm. So if if Joe's saying that, yo, you one of them weird type of guys who like to brag about girls you've been with after because they're attached to certain people. Yeah. Joe wouldn't be too far off saying that because it actually, it actually holds merit. Agree. It holds merit. I, I agree, but that's what I was saying to an extent. But the other thing is Joe seemed pretty hurt, like... Not hurt, but he's like, why is this the first time I'm finding out about it? And blah, blah, blah. Like, for you personally, does it matter who your girl smashed before you? To be honest, if it was my girl, I don't think so. But if I knew prior to smashing, depending on who they've been with, I probably wouldn't even give it a time of day. Mm -hmm. But if my girl, that means I probably didn't even... So, like, who would be off limits for you? Like, not names wise, but like best friends, acquaintances, like office people at work. Like, like who? Yeah, I don't date. I don't, to the point where it's like, yo, I would not talk to you. I don't date girls I work with, anyways. Okay. So even if one of the people we work with smashed, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to be around that. Anyway. Where'd you? Never mind. Um, and on top of that. Yeah, like who else is off limits? Yeah, friends, best friends are off limits. Probably like corny people, corny popular people out there. Yeah. yeah there's certain people that, yeah, if, if they're out there and I consider them corny and you, you know, you've been with them. I okay, mean, so give an example of someone corny within the city that you think. I'm not doing that. Why just do it? I don't know. I'm not doing that. Just do it. I'm not doing that. Why are you scared? I'm not scared of nothing. Just say it. I'm not scared of nothing. Okay. But I'm not doing that. It's, it's unnecessary. Like, well, there's, but there's people out there that I wouldn't, if you've been with like that person, I'm like, all right, you're good. I don't want that. I feel like for me, it's like I wouldn't talk to you, obviously, if you had a thing or fucked my friends. Mm -hmm. But I've made the mistake of being loyal to the wrong friends and like and not talk like the man would try to talk to me afterwards. And I was like, nah, like whatever. I know this person really had genuine feelings for you. So like I'm not going to dabble into that, whatever. And like they keep asking why. And I straight up told them like that's my friend. Like I would be very hurt if Uh that was the case. Like. I had real feelings for you and you want to try to talk to her, whatever, you know, like just being loyal and that came back and bit me in the ass. So I've learned to not be loyal oh, to had, that extent. She and ended to, up fucking your friend? To, no, no, no. She, uh, like that girl and I, I don't know. We're just not really like no, nothing like no, not a huge fallout or nothing like that. It's just like I found out some things that were going on behind the scenes mm-hmm. in terms of things that were being said about me. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know why the fuck I was loyal to you and even bothered doing that. So I just, you know, I mm. didn't address it because I'm like, I don't have the energy for that, whatever. You just cut the bitch off. Yeah, ain't pretty much. Ch- ain't nothing cut that I bitch off. I don't to explain myself to nobody, like, you know? But it's like, that's for me, like, that's a thing. Like, if you talk to my best friend or, or a friend even that I'm at some, like, I'm actually have some sort of relation with that I'm close with, whatever like and fuck them or they had feelings for you whatever like obviously that's off limits mm-hmm. um 
I'm trying to think what else. Like, I don't know. I think it's weird when people hook up with people that I know. Like, it's just weird. Like, I wouldn't be able to talk to you if I know you fucked somebody that I know. Like, that I know. Or yeah, that I even that, that I just, like, I don't know. It's just weird. I couldn't do that. I don't want to do that. I just don't trust people. Yeah, I don't want to do that because there's way too much. There's, there's way too much is out there for me to just try to like cheap out and just try to get something that was like someone else's that I know. Yeah. You know, and like there's one thing. Like, say if we smash a chick and I really don't know, I, I don't know that she dealt with you like that, mm-hmm. and it wasn't necessarily something that I was trying to be invested in, and it comes out to find out, yo, we you both did. It, then all right, then that happens. What? Because not every guy. Well, I don't know about you, but not every chick. Not every chick I talk to, I necessarily share with my friends. What do you mean share? Like, 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 sure. I'm like, yo, yo, this is who I'm dealing with right now. Oh, not- I don't do that either, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, cause sometimes you just want to just, you know, you're just gonna just see where it goes, and then, and, you know, and or maybe you're not even there for a long time. You're just there for a good time, and then you kind mm-hmm. of just you push it. Well, not even that. I have like my thing is I notice that when I start to tell more people about somebody. It's like right then and there, I just jinx it and it all goes downhill. Mm-hmm. So like I try to just keep it to myself. It's so funny though, because anybody who knows me knows if I ever come to you and say, okay, so I didn't tell you this, but that means I'm going to tell you that I like have literally been hiding a guy for like three, four months. Mm. <laughs> like not told you. I've been going on dates when I've been telling you that I've been hanging out at home or like doing nothing. Like, yeah, well, what did it come out? I was like, oh, he's been fucking me too. It's so no, 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 no. I think I would, I would figure that out. No, you wouldn't. No, I would figure that. No, out. I'm wouldn't. a top notch investigator. We already discussed this. Just because no, you wouldn't. <laughs> I am a top notch no, investigator. No, you wouldn't. I would figure that shit out, yo. But yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, <sighs> I lost my train of thought. Yeah, man. Switch the subject. All right, so Chris Sales is apparently banned from using social media, even the even YouTube where he makes his money, which is kind of fucked. Why did Judge do that? Why would he do that? So I was Googling to see, like, if you Allegedly. have if you, <laughs> if you have this, like, if you have no bail bond or whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, can you work, like, while you're in the state of Texas, can you still keep your job? But nothing came up, so I think that just depends on your workplace. Because mm-hmm. I was going to say, if that was the case and you could still work, then this is unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, but... He can't leave the state of Texas, mm. which is that's where he went to like Detroit like a few times at, during his being out on bond. Mm. Well, maybe he, this just got implemented now. Maybe because um, he got to get the GPA mon- GPS monitoring device, yeah. which is fucked up. I would hate to have that. Isn't that just another word for ankle bracelet? It is. But I swear, Rick Ross has that shit. Or I guess he either, either Rick Ross still has it or he took it off. Um. Yeah. I. I don't really know how I feel about this. I don't really have any remorse for the guy. This is all alleged. I don't know why they. Didn't, I don't know why they haven't put her under stipulations. Who Parker? Yeah, or is it because she's, she's the one that girl? was accusing him and charging him? Is well, that she why? had proof, and they had the the like the strangle or marks whatever on her neck were consistent with what would that be that of strangulation and shit like that. Mm. So I mean, like yeah, she told police Chris repeatedly slapped her, punched her in the face, and strangled her during the assault. And said he tried to defend herself because she thought she was going to die. Matt was giving her Tyson blows, eye jammies, really ground and pounds. I don't she, even know what I would ever do if I was in a scenario like that. Damn. It's scary. Shit, that's crazy. Oh, man. Well, that's that situation. <laughs> that's fucked up. Domestic violence is never a good thing. No, never. No. All right. So, soldier boy accused of kidnapping women and trying to uh, tie her up for six hours. I don't know if I believe this. Soldier boy has a girl that in his life that he fucking loves. Yeah, it's not that Megan chick. Yeah, he, he promotes her on his beautiful. story all the time. I want to be called in 2019. By the way, my goal is to be called Balenciaga beautiful by somebody. Balenciaga, are you listening to the Guap Dad 4000? That is a new level of beautiful. Are you listening to Guap Guap Dad 4000? Yeah, I'm bumping that shit every day. Balenciaga beautiful. I'm joking. I heard Soldier Boy say it to that Megan chick. Did you? Uh, that sounds like more of a Guap Dad four thousand. The fuck is Guap Dad? You never, you never heard about well, Guap Dad four thousand? No. Guap Dad four thousand? No, I don't know who the fuck that is. Wow, you are so out. Nina, no, what I'm are you not. Do- Me and DJ O were literally just talking about this whole new generation of music, and he specifically said, I trust your input on this. Like, No, why would anyone trust your input on it? stupid. Solitaire told me I should be A&R. For, why are these guys lying to you and you're believing them? That is a rapper right there. It, yo, a Canadian so- hip-hop Solitaire, legend I'm gonna say just right. told me I'm I should say be it. fucking A&R. Fuck it, I'm going to say it. 
Solitaire is out of the out of fucking contact. I'm out of out of the loop. I'm telling him you said that. He's out of the loop. Why would he talk to you about being an A and R? Because every week. Nina, what has- type of new music you bring to the table? A lot. You, Nina, you just don't know. That's cap. That's not cap. That's cap. I'm bringing valuable shit to the table. That's cap. I'm not bringing everything. You bring everything to the table. I bring valuable shit to that's the table. That's cap. That's not you, cap. I, I just told you. I just asked you about Guap that four thousand. You don't know about Guap that four thousand. No, I don't know about no Guap whatever four thousand. You don't know <laughs> about Guap that four thousand. No. Well, what rapper do you know? All the rappers that are popping, you don't like. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're not popping. You don't even... So if, if I haven't heard about it, he's not popping. Because you're not in the loop, Nina. No, I am very much in the loop. So how I'm you so miss go up that 4,000? That I'm losing blood circulation. There's certain there's certain people you got to know about, if, even if it's just off the, off the, off the hearsay. I know Blueface. Blueface? I've been knowing about Blueface. I knew you were going to do this. I knew I've been knowing about Blueface. And, and when, when I brought up... Know, all the other radio stations are playing Blueface. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Man, I'm not. <laughs> man, you out. Why do you do? They should put no trust in you, man. I don't trust your music. Uh, you're mad because somebody told me I have to be A and R. That's cap. That's cap. <laughs> That's Ew, crazy. Either, either, I didn't know this was gonna do this fouled up. I should have said I've, it years ago. I said I've, if they said that, if they said yo, they told you could be A and R. That's that goes nah, to I show. Dead ass B A and R. That's that get that that. that that ass shows that this music business don't give a fuck about ears no more. <laughs> Crazy. Don't give a fuck about ears no more. Nah, I have a good ear for music. I don't believe if you. If I hear something, I'm like, nah, this is good. I don't believe you. You don't know me then. That's crazy. Give me a playlist. Give you a playlist? I don't make playlists. Oh, come on, see, look I just put my phone on shuffle. Now look at that. You want to be A and R? You want to be A and R? A and R don't make playlists. A and R knows new music. Yeah, I know new music. Mm-mm. You're late to the party. No, I'm not late to the party. Yeah, you are. I'm always on time. No, you're not. You're not. You're, it's not Ashanti and our rule. <laughs> <laughs> you're not always on time. I didn't mean to take that in. <laughs> I am always on time, and that was a fire track. They were a fire duo. I may not call, matter. but I'm always on time. And that's an A and R thing that only I would know. No, you didn't even catch that. I got. I see. Look how I made the jokes together, man. No, that look, was at that. look at look at that. that look at trash. that. Look at that. man. Nah, man. <laughs> All right. How long are we? We are 57 minutes in. Okay. We're making some good headway. Yeah. Uh, um, we talk, you know what? If this is true, then Soldier Boy, you fucked up. But I don't really believe it because you have a woman in your life that you really love and that you promote all the time. And where would you find the time to kidnap a woman for six hours, <laughs> tie her up? Like, I don't you, think it sounds so stupid. It's yeah. because he blew up again. Someone wants to claim. Yeah, him. dude's always on Instagram live, Instagram story. Yo, his whole life looks like he's on family vacation or family Christmas vacation. Like he's Snapchatting everything. He's always live. He's always showing us what's going on. Side note: Have you ever used Instagram Live before? I've never used a live before. Really? I I know I'm not using it because I know I don't got that many people that follow me. I'm you not going. I'm not gonna be on there looking stupid. Nah, I used to Instagram live the pregame before the club with my friends. It used to be so funny. Yeah, look at you, pathetic. Yeah. That was a couple of years ago. I would never do that. No, nah, it was fun because then we played like drinking games via Instagram live. Maybe I'm gonna start doing that again. Do I? Let's see how That'll that be happen. kind of fun still. See how that happens. See I'll do it next week. See, see if you get like views. Cause I don't want to be on there with no people watching. It's like, come on, bro. But I think when and you go save on it, and then save it. No, I think when you go on every once in a blue moon, people will watch it because they're like, "Well, this person never goes on live." Yeah, so when I, I go on, get a couple like 20, 30 views. When I get on, when I go on live, when I at least have like ten k followers, go on Apollo for the people live. Oh my god, you should do. You know what you should do? What? You should do a big promotion like called the big reveal, and on your birthday, you reveal yourself who Apollo for the people is. You know, I'm not hard to find on the internet, on right? Live. I'm not hard to find. No, I know, but I'm saying like you reveal on on your Apollo for the People page on live. You reveal and you're like, hey guys, I'm Apollo, and then end it. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> not doing look that. at me, A and R, uh, public relations. Uh, nah, man, look I'm at that. That's... Great with it. <laughs> Let me be your manager. All right, so let's talk about this New Jersey. New Jersey passed a law that requires public schools to teach LGBT history. Yes. What you, what you thought? What's your thoughts about well, that? Well, what exactly does that mean? And I don't. I'm not saying that to sound ignorant. Um, I guess it means probably like the struggles and tri- uh, trials and tribulations of the the gay rights community. I guess the the green wall, the famous green wall thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget. Hold on, let me Google that. Talk. Keep on talking. Okay. Um. So, basically, like I I don't think this is a bad thing. Um, 
I mean, I don't know why people would see it as a bad thing unless you're just stuck in like an old fashioned way of thinking because it is 2019 and people are very much so gay and open about it. So, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. They're not teaching it until high school. So it says they're required to teach about historical contributions of people. Oh, they also have to teach about historical oh, contributions. Oh, Stonewall. Of Stonewall. That's where I fucked up. I did good Stonewall. there, Stonewall. Right? It's in Greenwich Village. Stonewall. Greenwich Village. What'd I say? Greenwich Village. Whatever. I think it's Greenwich. Greenwich, whatever. It's um, Green Greenwich. Greenwich? Did I do good there? I just want you to acknowledge that I did good there. Yeah, you're good, dude. Okay, thanks. All right, so, all right, so Stonewall. They're probably going to teach uh, students about s the Stonewall. I'm sure there's other things. You know, well, that's the only thing I know like about. pride parades and stuff like that, maybe. Yeah. Um, but I don't think this is a bad thing. This mm -hmm. is cool. Uh, Why? Why do you think this is cool? Because it's the world we live in. Uh -huh. Like, at least if they're learning it at school, it's not like I have to sit here and mis possibly misinform my child about oh, because you would, you hey, I don't know you, everything about LGBT. Probably, I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. You probably wouldn't even history. You probably not even history. You probably wouldn't even want to be informed on that. Well, the like, thing is, like, I wouldn't like necessarily expect you know when I was a kid growing up, I wouldn't have expected my mom to sit down with me and be like, hey. So gay means when two guys love each other and lesbian means when two girls love each other. And gay means everything. Come transgender on, means it. this and blah, blah, blah. Stop like it. I learned all that at school, not even from teachers, just from the kids at school. Gay is gay is two guys and two women. Lesbian is just two women. Okay. Um, gay is encompassing. Okay. So, yeah, like I, I don't think this is a bad thing. They're explaining the, to the kids about this, whatever. Um I mean, I overheard today a conversation of someone saying that they don't want their kids to learn about gay sex. Yeah. I think those are two very different topics. Gay sex versus and LGBT. Versus gay sex and gay history. history? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I personally personally when I hear this, when I when I see that all right, you're going to be teaching LGBT or LGBT yeah, LGBT uh history to my children or to mm -hmm. my to children. I was look I'm looking at it as like why? But what do you like? Why do you think that? Like, why? Why is this a, necess a necessity to educate the children on? Because is it? Is it? Is it history? Do you do people want to know about history of the LGBT community, well, or do they? Or the, or does the LGBTQ I can't LGBTQ say. community want to force us the history onto us? Is that what you're saying? Well, that too. But I'm also talking about is it. Don't they just want tolerance? Don't they just want to be respected? Mm -hmm. So why why but necessarily like say? I think this is good because think about it. Nowadays, it's very common to see a couple married, two guys or two girls, and have kids and whatnot via surrogate. That guy on I believe CNN, Andy Cohen. I'm not sure what network he's on, but he just had a baby via surrogate. He's a yeah. single dad, whatever. Like a lot of gay people are coming out like that, um, and it's like. You know, your kids are going to ask you at one point if they see that, like, oh, like, how come you and daddy are different from uh, so-and-so's parents who are both boys? Like, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like if they're learning about this, like, this is what gay is, this is what lesbian, this is what transgender and blah, 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 bisexual and shit. Then, like, they already kind of know that that's the case. Um, I don't. I don't know. I just don't see it as a bad thing. Like, if it's something that's happening in the world that is more prominent and we see it a lot more, then why not just explain it to the kids instead of having them wonder? Mm. But I I think what you're saying is more so different than history. If you're telling me for them to understand it, it's like, for me to understand homosexuality and verse me, then you teaching LGBTQ history okay, yeah. is two different things. Yeah, I guess. Right? right? One brings about... Uh, let's say tolerance and understanding. The other one brings about knowledge of that particular community and what they've been through. Mm -hmm. Which some may say, hey, some of those lines could be blurred because uh, these are you're talking you're telling us about white people, white homosexuals, mm -hmm. which, which can lead into a whole other thing. Yeah, you could I talk. You could even talk about how to, the people could get into the. I can, well. People get into the, the deeper discussion is that hey, are white homosexual men look or white homosexuals looked at as different as the black homosexual because the black homosexual has two different fights. Yes, agreed. It's black and you're gay. Mm -hmm. Agreed, hundred percent. That's the fight. 
it's almost it's like it's similar to like conversations about mental health they're always yeah. anchored around white people but yeah, a lot like of times when... i never knew how many people talk about mental health and i'm like yo bro all the all this discussion about mental health anyways is like i got to a point where it's like bro what are we talking about what do we think no, 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 wait, wait, wait. What are we talking about? Why do we got to make this a conversation? I What I say, what I come on here and say like a few months ago or back when we first started, mental health, uh, a mental issue or mental disorder is a chemical imbalance in the brain. Yes. So what are we talking? What are but, we talking? But the thing is, um, what's it called? You can't, I don't think, I don't know if they're all chemical. Like I think, I don't think anxiety is a chemical imbalance. I think it's uh, like a heart thing. Or something. I don't know. I'm not educated. You say, you say heart? Okay, I'm not educated in mental health. However, however, um, no, I think just talking about it, because there's such a stigma around mental health. When you think of someone who's depressed, you think of... Sometimes oh, you think like, they're lying. Because, you know, you they went through, that, you went you through that whole... you think they're always sad, like you're super sensitive towards them. When you think of someone who is schizophrenic, you think they're crazy or a nut job. Like, you know, you use these adjectives and these words to describe people who suffer from mental health issues. And I think... Well, hold on. Crazy was used as a medical term. Yeah, but not anymore. All right. But I think, you know, like that is what the purpose of bringing up mental health and speaking about it is, is to reduce that stigma that, yeah, these people are not crazy and psychopaths. They can very much live a very normal life. Just With like the help the rest of, of some us. drugs. And- or, or even, you know, just some therapy, some simple treatments, whatever, like, mm-hmm. you know, and they can very much live that simple life that you live too, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's just like, because when you look at it, um, it's like... Foreign families, mm-hmm. um, basically any family that's not white or any group of people who aren't white, to them, mental health doesn't exist. Mental health doesn't exist to Indian people. It doesn't exist to black people. It doesn't exist to Asian people. Like the people, not, I'm not talking now, this generation. This generation is very much open to those conversations. Because everyone talking, has it, apparently. I'm talking parents and grandparents, for example. Um, a great example is my grandma. Uh, she has depression and she was not diagnosed until recent. Like, not recently, but within a couple, maybe five, six years ago Mm -hmm. uh, when she got Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because we talk about it with my dad and we're like, you know, like growing up, like, what was she like and stuff? And he's like, she always like said things like, you know, like, I just don't feel like doing anything today or like, I don't know, for some reason, I just feel really upset. But nobody took it seriously because that conversation wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So she could have been suffering from depression all these years and it could have turned around. So it wouldn't be twice as hard with her Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's now. But because that wasn't a discussion back then, it's really greatly impacted her. Like there's days where I literally see my grandmother sit here and when the meds wear out for her Parkinson or for her Parkinson's, she starts to cry and she doesn't really remember where she is because she has Alzheimer's as well. She starts to cry and she starts to say, I want to die like Mm -hmm. shit like that, you know, where that could have been very well reversed if this was a conversation earlier on in the day before she got hit Mm -hmm. with two other diseases that have completely disabled her Mm -hmm. at the same time you know kind of just adds to it and so i think that's why it's very important to have these discussions and to kind of get that help beforehand before something like that happens or before it does get worse and then it's too late a little too late to acknowledge it at this point Mm -hmm. because think about it what are what am i supposed to do with my 76 year old grandma who's depressed and like has all these other diseases as well now it's like you know Mm -hmm. it could have been prevented Mm -hmm. but it was never spoken about and i think that is one of the main things that it's like, yeah, we need to talk about it and kind of reduce, I guess, the embarrassment around it too. Is it embarrassing? Well, I think that's what it comes down to for those people. I don't think so. No, but I I think so. Like people like that, just speaking on behalf of my grandmother's case, like she, she doesn't want other people to know she's suffering from depression in terms of like extended family members and stuff. Cause then they're just going to think, Oh, you're weak. Like that's what it's looked at like. But hold on, let's be let's be honest. Uh-huh. Everyone claims to have some type of mental illness. Yeah. Everyone claims to have it. Everyone claims to have it. I don't know if it's weak at this point. Mm-hmm. I think if you don't have mental illness, I think you're the black sheep. <laughs> it's like, who the fuck is you, Mister Perfect? <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't know if it seemed weak. I mean, I guess I guess I, some people could be insensitive towards it, being uh-huh. people who may not know what's going on, yeah. or people who just been through the scene phase where everyone was depressed and all that, and look all blacked, and it's like, I come went on. through that phase. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, people looking back on a lot of things is like, 
you could be fake depressed. But and you know pe- what? And people and people talk about, hey, I'm depressed. And it's like, all right, bro, you've been saying you're depressed for six months. Why have you done no shit about it, huh? Uh, but you know what, though? You, I think you, you a can't lot self-diagnose of, yourself and then self-cure yourself. I think a lot of views on mental health come from personal experiences. Um, like for me, growing up at the young age of 12 and 13, yeah. I had friends who were cutting themselves mm-hmm. and like I'm talking best friends who I still talk to to this day. Is that, is that depression or is that just self-harm? I mean, like the reason they were cutting themselves was because they were like very upset about a lot of things going on. Maybe um, sometimes gay people who are hiding themselves from the world happen to find other ways means to the, the, the beat well, themselves. So, the re- so one of these friends, his mother had died when he was in grade four, or grade three, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were in the seventh grade. And like he was like threatening suicide to the point where I think but, I spoke about this. Yeah, yeah, but hold on, but hold on. Let's be honest. Stop. You don't got stop. You don't. Even, you gotta. I gotta stop you right there and even enlighten the people who are listening. Self harm doesn't necessarily mean mental illness. Self harm is a either is either a reaction to maybe not getting enough attention in the home, or it's a self harm to is is or it could be the lack of let's say power over self or type of power over life where they can't really be able to maneuver around life and do things that they want so the only power they get is from harming themselves self-harm is a way to numb the pain exactly or seek type of control you would rather feel the pain from cutting yourself than you would the pain of everything else that's going on in your life not necessarily like i'm telling you, there's different variation as to why people would cut themselves just because of depression or not or numbing themselves from the pain people may just want to cut themselves because they're not getting attention yeah and, and may, that, and, that oh, causes and, and, the depression if you're not getting attention or and love from your parents at home don't you think that's going to cause somewhat of an issue maybe these kids who maybe in certain situations maybe it's, they just cutting themselves because they have no type of control over their life. It's like, fuck it. This is the only thing I could do to get life. And so I let me just cut my foot. And like, oh, well, I finally... Well, that's I'm saying. It, it, it depends on what your personal experiences are with mental health. Like, yeah. with this kid, obviously, I knew it had a lot more to do with his family life and his mother passing away and whatnot. You just couldn't cope uh, with it. Threatening suicide to the point where I took it to the principal. And he did not talk to me for a month. So like, he was pissed at me. But I was like, buddy, I just saved your fucking life. Yeah, exactly. He's still around to this day. And... Like, I could literally say I saved, like, my, I remember coming home and crying because I was like, he's not going to be friends with me anymore because he was one of my best friends. Mm. And my mom was like, it's fine. Like, you saved somebody's life. I had another best friend who, same thing, like, a lot of people that I was friends with growing up were very unhappy Mm. at such a young age that for me, it's like, yeah, it is important to talk about these things because even so, like, those friends were embarrassed to talk about those things. Like, Mm. you know, it was kind of like, oh, like. I have these cuts on my arms and stuff, like hiding them and stuff, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, once I seen them, I'm like, yo, what what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, you know? Or maybe that, that could be just their thing. Maybe body harm is they find beauty in scars. Well, the one friend that I'm talking about didn't. But <laughs> right. Maybe those have, there's people out there who but, find beauty in scars, yeah, man. Yeah, but, but I, yeah, I think at the end maybe of the day, just addicted it just comes down to your experience. So I definitely think it's important to bring up that conversation around mental health and just, you know, yeah. keep it, keep it there. Because I think, regardless of whether like regardless of whether or not like just saying like you know what are we talking about at the end of the day as long as it's being put out there i mm-hmm. think it's a good thing okay but that's just my it. personal opinion on it, it. Or, yeah all right punch back then uh so i just want to talk about let's just all right let's get two more things in and this end soon so let's talk about this uh backlash that neam nelson said yes what, what, what's your thoughts on this because he's a fucking racist Dude, I don't think he's racist. You really don't think I so? I don't think he's racist because I don't think he, he promoted anything about pop, pop, popping up his own race. I think what he said was very insensitive. Maybe, it. you know what? I don't think it, what he said was insensitive. I just thought what he said was very detailed and very directed to a particular race because it was probably related to the fact that his woman, that the woman that got raped was black. And then I look at it like this. Mm-hmm. You know, situations where people say, or maybe they get into a fight with like a particular nationality. Let's say, okay, let's just use Indian people as an example. You all right, so with an Indian person. All right, so let's say, let's say, quote unquote, Indian person or Indian people happen to be congregated in a certain place, and they happen to do maybe do a job improperly all the time, mm-hmm. right? You're going to build up maybe a prejudice towards that. It's like how people talk about Asian people and driving. Yeah. 
Yeah. So nor, more so, maybe they're not racist per se, but maybe just their dealings with that happen to just reflect in their anger when they're angry. Maybe when they're perfectly fine, they may not even be any type of anger towards that particular nationality or whatever, whatever have you. And I look at it like this. He said, like, ah, I was looking for this black person to get revenge. It's like the whole thing. You take one eye, I take two years, right? Mm-hmm. Or you kill my friend, I take two years type of shit. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not, see, To be honest, maybe as a black person, I should be really upset and riled up with this. But I'm going to be honest. It's like I looked at this and I was like, what is new? Well, the reason that I say, and correct me if I'm wrong. But also, before you keep on going, uh-huh. he exposed this on himself, which I kind of respect. You got to tell on yourself. Yeah, this is not so like someone funny. digged up in his Twitter and was like, oh, this guy's a nasty person. I know you person. so well because as soon as I saw the line where it says he brought it up himself, I was like, Apollo's going to like think that it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> what so you telling yourself is, they are um, I definitely know you now. <laughs> um, but no, the reason I say that this is racist, and correct me if I'm wrong. But back in the day when slavery was a thing, whatever, um, and like they would, you know, like rape the the white guys would rape the black girls and stuff, whatever. And then that's how the mixed babies came along. Right. Mm-hmm. So but wasn't there also a thing where like they would say that the black guys raped white women and they would hang them when the rapings when the rapes never happened. Right. Black, that black, you weren't listening. black. The white guys would say that the black guys raped their white woman, their yeah. like wives or whatever, as a lie, and yeah. they would hang those black guys. They would put them on the noose and hang them, right? Exactly. I mean, to be honest, they really didn't need to lie to be that's honest. They could. But I know. But that's that's my reasoning for saying that this is racist because as a white man in society, mm-hmm. you should understand that these comments coming from you and that whole thought process. Mm-hmm connects back to those days back in slavery especially in america but this man is this man is of irish descent he said he grew up in ireland i don't give a fuck where he grew up which i no i think it does i honestly do i honestly do think it does because western society really hold western society really holds racism to a uh to uh western society really holds racism to a a certain level Mm -hmm. whereas you come over to America or Canada and stuff like that. There's race, the Dubai segregation, and stuff like like Ireland. Let's say it's a little, little, little different. Maybe they don't have that type of racism. Maybe they have prejudice. But they do have racism. In, Ireland is part of the UK, and they do have racism in the UK. Oh yeah, you're right. So never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, I could, especially because my mom being there, like my mom has told me lots of stories. Yeah. Um, well, maybe he, you know what? Maybe I, he's in the wrong. Maybe yes. he's in the wrong. For, he, you know what? He didn't do anything. I think maybe the wrong thing about it is just the mentalization or even the thought process of even trying to go about doing something, even even taking the steps to put yourself in situations where that incident can occur. I think. But you know what? Also, uh, it's not in like the clip, I, yeah. I heard him say, like, because then the interviewer asked him if this was any other race, would you have felt the same way? And he said, yes, 100 yeah. percent. I think he would have felt the same way if it was an Indian person, an Asian person um, or anyone else who was of uh, ethnic descent. But, however, if I was a white guy, I don't think he would have felt the same way at all. I don't think he would have been like, oh, I'm going to go to white neighborhoods where he probably yeah. lives, predominantly white neighborhoods, and look for somebody to come out of a bar and kill them. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think he would have said that. I think this was very racist. And my reasoning for that is because this thought process just links back to what actually went down back in the day when slavery was a thing. Mm-hmm. That's my reasoning behind it. But I, I, I don't know. I don't have, like, I feel like him bringing it out, he wanted to appear as this ally to the black community no i don't think like, I don't oh, even, like look i'm actually like what a thing to say during black history month bro like come on i don't like, think I, I think i don't even well no this is crazy crazy he said he's a vote catholic and went to he went to his priest out and gave him ah, uh, crazy uh yeah this is not going this i think this is going to blow over because he exposed his own self mm-hmm. he lived in his own truth like he told he told you exactly what type of person he was yeah it's not like someone tried to defame him or nothing. Someone tried to like say like you're this and that. To be honest, let's. I want to see if something else happens. Okay. Well, what's the last thing you want to talk about? I know exactly what it is. If start, we're gonna talk about six nine. He of pled guilty. Of course. Six nine pled guilty. Sure did. To uh, nine to all counts. count nine counts of all federal you know racketeering charges. How I wasn't ex- I didn't I wasn't expecting this. Really. I was expecting him to beat it. I was expecting I was expecting him not to have a shaky case and figure out a way to beat it 
in terms of all the other, all the other evidence and kind of figure out a way to get out of the the situation where the feds ran into his home and found a gun and the backpack because apparently they did that under unlawful warrants. Mm-hmm. So I figured he had some type of leverage over taking this to trial and still winning. But like people said, there was an informant inside the gangster or the nine trade gangster bloods in New York, which helped bring down all these people, which made it possible. So for him to, he didn't snitch. He didn't snitch. People are saying that he snitched. He, from the paperwork that I saw, he didn't put no names. All he said was, I plead guilty. Mm -hmm. And he also admitted to saying that he sold a brick of heroin. Mm -hmm. He paid people to shoot other other artists that he had enemies with beef with Mm -hmm. to increase his standing in the gang. Yep. He didn't say, yo, it was shoddy. He didn't say it was Kuda. He didn't say it was anyone else. Okay. He didn't point no fingers. He said, I'm guilty, which kind of fucks up in terms of other things are going on. Because when you say I'm guilty and you're implemented heavy with inside a lot of the charges pending against other people, mm-hmm. it makes them look like liars because it, it doesn't it doesn't bring about reasonable doubt. Okay. So that's what people may are looking at Takashi as a as the bad guy here. You could plead guilty. There's gangsters who plead guilty or cop a plea and stuff like that. Or some people, some gangsters take it to trial and they they hold their head up high and go like, all right, well, I'm gonna get what I get, or mm-hmm. I'm gonna beat it. But some people, a lot of people, cop out to a plea. Like, don't get it fucked up. People plead guilty and cop out yeah. to shit all the time. Don't get it fucked up. Definitely. But from what I saw, I did not see six nine snitch. Um. I just, like, I have a question. So, did you really see him as, like, this big tough guy, like, the whole time that he was? Like, did you think of him as a real gangster the whole time he was doing his Like, like 50 Cent says, 50 Cent said he's not a real, he was never a real street dude. I agree. Uh, me looking at it, I looked at it as entertainment. I looked at it like a lot of stuff in the music business. I think I mentioned this before, or where I'm mentioning it now. The music business always had gangsters in it. Mm-hmm. You know, from back in the early singing days, the mob would be affiliated heavy with the music industry, uh, used a lot of the music money to uh, launder their drug money that they had. Mm -hmm. So him being affiliated with gangsters, not surprising. It happens. A lot of rappers are affiliated with gangsters and real street mob. But to find that, to find out the fact that he was actively working and to increase his standing inside the gang and selling heroin. Yeah. While being the famous rappers, Takashi Six Nine, it's almost like you're a bitch for that. It's kind of like you uh, you were being treated as their bitch for that. Something like that, and I'm, I was going as far as like, you gangsters are fucking idiots. Yeah, you had the cash cow <laughs> jeopardizing his whole fucking situation <laughs> for true. some just bullshit. It's true. Why would you have the cash cow jeopardizing all that now shit? Now they're all fucked. The all fuck. All you could have done was like, oh, where we have something to bring us out of this type of situation. Yeah. Why not use that? I mean, I personally myself didn't see him as a gangster from the second I saw that whole video of Chief Keith telling him to meet him on O Block or whatever. And then mm-hmm. he got off the van for three seconds and then looked around, went back in the van. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, I was there. That's when I was like, okay, yeah. this guy's a fraud. But I don't know. For me personally, it's just like, I don't know. That's just, I, I never liked him in the first place. So it wasn't really a big thing for yeah. me. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, Amen. Uh, I, I want to see how, how the situation goes with him and um and this whole court proceeding. Mm-hmm. Apparently people are saying that certain people are going to get like 200 years or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And like shoddy, people are going to, they're going to give shoddy 200 years. They give people that many years, you're going to die. In America, that. yeah. Someone's serving like, who else? Is, I forget a name. Someone's serving like quadruple life. Holy fuck. I don't know what quadruple life is. Four times 25, 100. No, qua- life is, life imprisonment is life until you die. No, but life in prison is 25. 25 to life, isn't it? No. Nah. I know. I've been. I'm 25 joking, to not, life? I have not been. I've not been, you guys. Let's clear it up. I've not been. Nah, you like, you, in life means you in life. You might get granted parole. I swear life in prison is 25 years. That's what they consider life in prison. 25 to life. What is life in prison? A huh? uh, judge may impose a sentence of 30 years to life. What does that mean, to life? 25 years to life? Yeah. It means either you get hit with 25 years to life. So you get. Oh, oh my 
god, all this time. Wow, this is like, you know those tweets where it's like, <laughs> I was today years old when I found, I was today years old when I found out 25 to life is it 25 to life, it's 25 to life. Yeah. Like the two is the hyphen, 25 dash life. The dash is all the time in between. You could get served with any time in between then. So 25 is the minimum. And probably, yeah, 25 to life. Damn. Damn, all this time this is mind-blowing people serve like 30 years in prison and shit like that that's crazy yeah, you know, it's actually crazy when you think about it because it's like they come out and the whole world has changed yeah it's different you like, spend like two phone. decades two decades and, and some change inside inside prison like that's crazy 20, imagine if cars. you go back if you went in if you went into prison 2019 no 1992 mm -hmm. and coming out 25 years later yeah Life is life is a different type of ball game for you. Like you have cell phones. Just, to be honest, I think people in prison that has like cell phones and shit like that. They'll probably not be too far, like out the loop. Yeah. But like in terms of just being out in the real world and how seeing things moving, shaking and popping. Yeah. <laughs> shaking and popping. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably be a little different. All right. Well, wrap it up. You got somewhere to be. Yeah. Look, we got an hour and a half in. Okay. Uh, appreciate you. Oh, I probably cut some stuff up down. Anyways, not, like, not a lot though. Only probably like three minutes, if yeah. anything. Not even yeah. a minute. Maybe. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening once again. This is the Educated and the Reckless podcast. And uh, if you're listening, you can find us on Audio Mac, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and we're on other platforms as well. Keep a lock with us because this year we will get some cameras eventually. Uh, and if you like this content, make sure you subscribe, uh, rate, share, and comment. Tell a friend, tell a friend, follow yeah, us. Exactly. And talk and have and let the conversations we have on this podcast into your daily lives, okay? Yes. All right. So that's what we, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Wrap we, it up, man. Why are you up. struggling to wrap it up last week and Damn. this week? Damn. It's been the Educating Reckless Podcast with your host, Apollo P. And No Better Dina. And we out.